Hey, Scale Chasers! Welcome back! Today, we're walking into a windswept basin in Patagonia, where the sandstone stacks up like server racks and the horizon dares you to keep going. It's here, in this ancient quarry, that we find Dreadnoughtus, a titanosaur that completely redefined the word big. Forget big. This is a baseline for gigantic. Imagine a neck like a crane boom, a powerful tail acting as a counterweight, and limbs as thick as pylons holding up a bridge. This isn't just about sheer mass. It's about incredible architecture. The secret to its size lies in the details. Its vertebrae were riddled with air sacs, a clever trick to cut down on weight without sacrificing strength. You can even see the muscle attachment scars on the bones, mapping out a powerful lattice that allowed this beast to move without shaking itself to pieces. Life for a dreadnoughtus was a constant game of logistics. It had to reach new patches of plants faster than it could strip. The old ones bare. It had to move the herd to water before the ground collapsed under their combined weight. And the young ones? They stayed safely inside a perimeter of massive necks and tails that were basically a built-in defense system. What about predators? Well, even a pack of medium-sized theropods would think twice. They might try to harass the herd, burn a few calories testing the edges, and hope for a stumble. But a full-on heroic charge, unlikely. Dreadnoughtus answered threats with its sheer presence and the laws of probability. On most days, that was more than enough. The fossil record tells an amazing story. Growth rings on the bones show that even teenagers were the size of buses. Isotope signatures in the fossils sketch out a life of seasonal migration, moving between the uplands and the river bottoms. The incredible thing about this particular dig site is the precision. Finding so many bones from a single individual is rare, and it lets biomechanics experts run wild in a good way. They can create detailed gait models, estimate the center of mass, and even map out how the tendons worked. Every new variable they solve is like a love letter to just how far vertebrate engineering can push a plant-based diet into a living skyscraper. Of course, all good things come to an end. When massive volcanic eruptions buried the river corridors and the climate started to shift, the supply chain that fed these giants began to fail. Lineages had to adapt, reroute, or simply end. But the lesson from Dreadnoughtus is timeless. Lighten the frame, lengthen the reach, let air carry its share of the load, and wield your size like a fundamental policy, not just a flashy stunt. If continental-scale plant eaters make you as giddy as they make me, then you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and let me know in the comments which sauropod you want to see us put on the crane next. Thanks for watching.